Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Self-Publishing Mastery Talks. Um, today, my very, very special guest is an amazing woman who's wearing many, many hats. I love her Von Tapp and Black hat, but um, <laughs> she's most known in the writers community here in Southern California and throughout the US. and. I think worldwide right now as being the founder of Black Shadow Enterprises. Um, she's also the founder of the Book Fest and of Books That Make You. All of all these three uh, platforms and services, they, they won awards and she's also uh, won many awards. She, she's been uh, awarded a book publicist um, here in Southern California. Uh, she's an entrepreneur, she's a tra trailblazer, she, she's been helping authors for many, many years now, and um, her name is Desiree Duffy, finally here with us. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Oh my goodness, AG, thank you. That, that was quite an introduction. Thank you, I feel honored and humbled to be here. Thank you for, for, for taking the time to do this while you're traveling. You're not, you're not even the, in the U.S., can, you, can we say, where you are right now? Sure, sure. Well, you, you might see my, my friend, the busty friend behind me. I'm not sure who she is. And the very provincial landscape. Um, I'm at a little cottage in Loire Valley, central Loire Valley in France. That's about two hour, two and a half hours from uh, Paris, uh, so kind of southeast, southwest. Well, the Loire Valley extends a very long ways. It's where the Loire River runs. So I'm here in a little cottage in France, just yeah, chatting with you. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, yeah. That's the way I see this our conversation today, like a, a nice morning chat because this uh, this episode will be live on a on a Thursday morning, so it will be a, a a good opportunity for you to you know grab a cup of coffee, a cookie, uh, maybe a spiced pumpkin latte since. It's almost Halloween and enjoy our conversation. And I have to say that Desiree, she's been really working really, really long hours, really, really hard for, um, I think ever since you founded Black Chateau Enterprises um, a few years ago, but especially since this whole COVID started, you, you helped so many, many, many authors that you really deserved <laughs> a little, a little break and, and a little holiday. So oh, thank you. So and you're still working. I mean, you're still here with us, and I know you know with um, the book fest just around the corner, there are still many pieces to to put together, and we are going to talk about that. Um, but um, we were just discussing before we started this interview about how this whole COVID and, and lockdown and, and the, the restrictions shaped the, the publishing world and um, how it is still affecting authors and, and books and the way authors interact with, uh, with uh, their readers. So I think that's a very timely topic that we should, we should start with, especially that you are, you've, been, you've been doing it, you've been living it for, for almost two years now, I think. Yeah, exactly. And there is a lot that we can unpack with that. Um, you know, there's kind of three main things I want to bring up. We'll kind of start with the big picture, zero in and zero in to stuff that's more just pragmatic and happening now. I think, and I think there's good things too that the pandemic and lockdown has done. I guess I like to look for that silver lining and you always look for opportunities and you look for ways to adapt um, th that's where the book fest came from. And thank you for bringing that up. I'll definitely tell you more, but that really was born out of COVID, out of lockdown, out of, hey, we can't do in-person events. Let's do an online book festival. And boom, that, that's where the book fest came from. And I think that's given you know, authors and lots of industries too, lots of, lots of creatives, people in different aspects of different businesses are now using Zoom and we're now doing online conferences and we're doing online events. For authors specifically, 
it's May doing an online book signing or interacting on social media, doing things that they might not have normally done before, just more accepted, more common. And in some cases, it's made it even a little bit easier. It's actually a little bit easier to do some of these things online because you logistically, you're not traveling, paying extra expenses for hotel rooms and, and all of that. We can kind of get, get more done in the day when we're online. So I think that's one of the positive things that this has done. I think another thing it's done is it's created a lot of competition for writers overall because there's a lot more writers who are writing or just got done writing. We all had this time to focus suddenly on our passion projects, on that manuscript that had been sitting in that writing drawer for all that time, we pulled it out. And there's just so many wonderful, awesome stories that are coming out and will continue to come out. Um, and I think that's good for people, society, for people who love to read like us. But then it also means that there's more competition than ever before. It's always been very competitive, but you know, I think we're gonna see, see more of that. From a real brass tax perspective, and this is happening now, even just a couple of weeks ago, there's been chatter within the industry about the supply chain, about books not being able to be even printed. They were cautioning uh, stores and publishers to order their books a couple of weeks ago to make sure that they were available in time for the holidays. And when you think about it, it's, oh, we're still looking at fall. We're not quite thinking that far in advance, but I think there's going to be some impacts on the industry that way. Um, some books just aren't going to come out. And you know that's for books that are coming out. And we, I know you especially, you focus a lot on self-published or indie or small press type authors. Well, you know, it's going to have a very uh, a trickle down effect for them too, except the big publishers can't get their books. The little guys are going to have a harder time too. And when you're getting ready to launch a book, you might be looking at, I'll be fine. I'm launching my book after the first of the year. But what happens to your, your arcs, your advanced reading copies that you want to order? What happens when everything just starts to get pushed and shoved? So I can see this possibly even affecting people that are publishing books, you know, after the first of the year, having an impact on them as well. Yeah, so this is something to this is this is something to keep in mind for the print books. Uh, the ebooks don't have the same, let's say, uh, doomed fate. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, I, I I'd like to mention that Black Shuttle Enterprises is an award-winning book marketing agency. You're basically doing everything that an author needs to be successful and launch their book. So you're doing branding, you're doing websites, you're doing social media, you're doing media relations, um, you're doing self-publishing support. Did I miss anything? Uh, there's a few other things in there, but those are the highlights. <laughs> yeah, so that, and that was basically, those are all the things that incorporate into an author platform and that you need you as, a, as writers to, Make sure that at least you get the book in front of the, of the readers, and then and then you'll see. And the email marketing, yeah, that's also a, a big one. Uh, and building your audience. Um, so um, building an audience, I think that's a, that's a big big thing. And um, you can hope of uh, having a a, a a successful book launch unless you build an audience. So what happens when an author knocks? on your door and says, hey, I'm a first time author. I have a, a book and I know you've, you've, you've helped first time authors many, many times. So what happens then? What do you do? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's such a great point because quite often people feel that the marketing and the PR starts after the book is published. And I say this all the time, I say this every day of the week and every day of the week I get the same email or the same call from an author I just published my book now I'm ready for the PR marketing oh I had at least three months at least that's the minimum four months and just depending on that author platform that needs to be built even longer 
why? What, why could I possibly need all this time to do these things? Well, to start off that three, four month window, what I, we need to do is pre-launch marketing. And this happens with the big publishers. So it's part of what the industry expects. We get advanced reviews. When we do that, we're reaching out to people who review books, who review books and write about them. They need time to request the book, get the book, read the book, write the review, post the review. All of those things take time. Um, you don't want to force somebody to review your book in a week because your book is coming out next week. So it impacts the marketing all the way down the road when those things get rushed and hurried. We use a service called NetGalley, for example. One of the things that NetGalley does is it brings all sorts of people who want to read books in advance, librarians, bookstore buyers, um, media, press, as well as bloggers and journalists. They want to see that book in advance. When you post something and it's already been released, it's like you just take the sail, the wind right out of the sails of the boat. You know, it's just like, oh, that's not as exciting. Why, why is that on there? I'm going to go look at the new things. It's, you know, people want to look at the new, exciting books that are, that are coming out. So that's why from just a very, you know, pragmatic point of view for a book launch, that's one of the main things. And we need time to pitch it to write the press release, to get the media interested, to book those media interviews for doing any kind of advertising. It takes time, sometimes months in advance that we're booking things out. So that's the core right there. And then kind of you know, tapping into what you were mentioning before as far as an author platform, if you need a, a website, yeah, why, I, I shouldn't make that in a week before the book is launched. You need to have that months, maybe even a year in advance. Your social media following, those audiences that you need to build, you're building them on social media. So don't start your Instagram page a month before you started because you're, you're, you might end up with maybe a couple of hundred followers if you're lucky, but start that six months in advance and you're going to have a few thousand if you're doing it right. Same thing with Twitter, Facebook, or book talk, tick tock, you know, that's, that's something that you have to build and nurture over time. You can't rush that. And you mentioned email marketing too. Same thing, email marketing, your email list. You want to build excitement. You want people to experience your journey so that when your book is available, you're like, oh my gosh, now it's available. Now I can buy my good friend AG's book. And they're your good friend because they met you on Facebook. I might not ever have met you in person, but AG has been sending out a monthly newsletter that has tips for cooking or for getting ready for the holidays or whatever it is. My book is all about, you know, having a, a cozy mystery and, you know, in it, I have recipes. So in the meantime, I'm going to give you a recipe every month and then, oh my God, you're going to have to read the recipe that's in my book. There's ways to build things up, build up anticipation so that when the book is ready, your audiences are there and ready to receive it. And trust me, you can't do that in just a couple of months. And it, it definitely is hard to do when the book is already out. Since you mentioned recipes now, of course, I'm thinking about David Rug Ruggiero, one of your clients <laughs> whom you've helped and you've, you've also helped him uh, with an amazing virtual book launch. So I'd like to talk uh, about that a little bit. I have a question uh, before though, uh, how, what's a realistic, time frame for building an audience for an author who doesn't have any followers? If they're starting from scratch, really, I'm going to say a year before your book is launched. Yeah. Um, different platforms can be built up differently. And, you know, if, if you're providing really great content, it, it can vary. You know, book talk, TikTok, can be built up relatively fast right now because it's kind of the new fancy thing and everybody's jumping on that. It's harder to build up on a Facebook page. I don't even know who should be doing Facebook pages anymore. So it's just, just kind of antiquated. Twitter, it's really hard to get a, a lot of engagement on Twitter, but if you're doing it right, there's, there's a great writer's community. You use the hashtag actually, writing community. So kind of depending upon the platform uh, when it comes to social media, um, is six months maybe, and it depends too on your website. The thing is, is all of these things take time. We can help you with it, but if you're doing it on your own, you're building a website 
and you're building up your Instagram and your Twitter or whatever it is you happen to be doing and your email list, you're becoming your own marketer. And so to try to all of a sudden become a marketer four months before your books launch, you're taking on not just one full-time job, you're taking on several full-time jobs, plus you're trying to get your book out there. Why would anybody want to put themselves through that misery when you know, give yourself time, build it up slowly, naturally, organically. And I think the most important thing is it feels more genuine then. Yeah. You know, if I've been connected with AG for a year on Facebook and we've shared recipes and stories and hanging out and chatting, and now she wants me to check out the book she's releasing, I'm much more likely to do that than somebody I just met who's like, buy my book, buy my book. It's, it's, they're almost like that annoying salesperson at that point. So, yeah. So, uh, or if, as Desiree mentioned, if you are really, um, in a hurry to release your book. I mean, when I say in a hurry, it's like three to six months. Then you work with a professional because it's also about, um, everything is about relationships. So a book marketing agency will have already those relationships built and then um, have the tools that could fast forward this uh, audience building. And uh, I know you, you have some really good examples there. I think about Brandon Cross who did really well with email marketing, but let's get back to David Ruggiero. Mm-hmm. So David Ruggiero, a celebrity chef, an author who uh, started with cookbooks and then dove into uh, thrillers and romance and now he's back into cookbooks. So you did a book launch for him, actually, a virtual book launch. And I'd like to talk a little bit about how authors can tap into these uh, virtual book launches and uh, generate buzz around that, their books. Sure, sure. Um, You know, I think there's a lot of ways to do it. I know that there are bookstores that you can partner with and and do a virtual book launch with them. The nice thing is they can help facilitate the ordering of the books and signing copies and stuff. So it will replicate that to a degree. When we did David Ruggiero's, it was last year, I think around this time, actually. And part of the problem was the print books, just like we talked about this year, printing books was, it, it was, it was too slow. So we, we really couldn't even, you know, do the printed copies of the books. But what we did instead is we had a session very much like this. We were talking with him. We distributed it on Facebook and we invited people to it. We invited our network because we have a lot of book lovers and readers on our list. It was collaborative and he invited his friends and family and sent out to his newsletter list. Uh, we did like a Q&A, an author Q&A. So I think if somebody's going to do something like that, it might be nice to have somebody ask, ask questions, talk about the book. Um, we had two actors that read from the book because that book was a romance. So it was the man and the woman. So two actors, you know, read parts. Um, but if an author doesn't have access to actors or really have that duality, they can always read from their own book, read an excerpt from it, um, answer questions as well with David. We had lots of great questions from the audience and to really have fun, we built a contest around it. We gave away not only copies of that book, but of some of his previous books, because like you mentioned, he's very prolific. He does cookbooks and he does other types of genre fiction. Um, and he, he, he had some um, flavored oils too, because he's a chef. So there's like the drizzling oils that you can put over pasta and stuff. So, and, and that's an example of that made sense for him. Like, fine, what, what's the thing that makes sense for you as an author? Again, just going back to the cozy mystery as an example. Maybe you're giving away cookies or cupcakes or something like that, or hot cocoa or tea, something that kind of goes along with reading that cozy mystery. Um, you know, romance novels or romance writers could do, you know, heart-shaped chocolates and things like that. So be, being creative, I think, with it is really part of the key of making it successful. These are all wonderful creative ideas. And uh, I think authors are creative by nature, so it shouldn't be too difficult to come up with this idea. But uh, I have to say in Desiree's situation, her background in marketing, in branding, that 
happened before she founded Black Shadow Enterprises and then her ex expertise as a radio host. So all her skills and talents combined um, help authors with their book launches and their book marketing and, and getting uh, their talent in front of the readers. And I think nowadays, just as you said, this way, Others are needed because I think books can make the world a, a, a kinder place, even scary books. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Can I give you an example? You do, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we went to Notre Dame in Paris. Uh, and as you know, Notre Dame we had, had the fire. So you can't go in. It, we just walked by to get the photo op standing in front of it. And I noticed they had a a staircase going underground and there was some kind of archaeology exhibit. And I went and checked it out and they, they had two things. One, they had uncovered different streets and an ancient Roman bath and the sidewalks and arches from when the Romans were, were there centuries and centuries ago. So that was just so cool. But they also, also had like an homage to Victor Hugo who wrote The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And it just struck me as I was walking through this because that book, when it came out, that book, is really what inspired the people of Paris to get behind and restore and basically save buildings like Notre Dame. At the time, not too, too long after the French Revolution, you know, buildings like Notre Dame were, you know, they were, had been destroyed partially. The Gothic architecture, you know, with the flying buttresses and it's very, very ornate, that was not in vogue at the time. So a building like Notre Dame was considered to be garish and, you know, not attractive at all. But it just struck me the way Victor Hugo's book really actually ignited so many people's imaginations and it got people donating money and restoring it. And you know, putting up the, the gargoyles and the centuries and the architecture and bringing it back to life, and I, I think that ties in with what you you just said so beautifully because books do inspire us. Fictions, you know, stories like that can inspire us to do fabulous, wonderful things for humanity. So I think that's important for us to keep in mind. Yeah, and I think that's where the book fest uh, comes in. So again timely and beautifully because it brings uh in front of the readers an array of best-selling authors and and amazing books for two days october 23rd october 24th and of course we, we are going to talk about this but um I'm going to keep this segment for the for the end of our conversation. Uh, I like I have uh, just a few more questions about the you know the the self publishing like current publishing self publishing landscape about and about book marketing. Um, what are your favorite um, social media platforms right now that you think that are most oh. helpful? Um, I still contend, I've, I've always said, go on the social media platforms that make the most sense for you and your book and your audience. And that ties back into branding, right? So what's your brand? If you're young adult fiction, you should be on platforms where young adults are hanging out. Hello, Instagram. Um, <laughs> you know, interacting with them, being in groups at, you know, where your audience is. That's, that's part of what social media is about because that's the people who are going to read your book. So be where your readers are going to be. Um, if your book is more political, you probably want to be on Twitter uh, or business oriented. You want to be on LinkedIn. So go to the places where your audience is going to go and where it's going to make the most sense. Because, you know, I'm not saying that somebody can't market their business book on Instagram and there's lots of different crossover. But you really got to think about it and be creative and make sure that you're hitting that audience in the right way. Um, the other part of it is be where you want to be. I, ran into so many authors where they're like, I hate Twitter, but I'm supposed to be on it because so, you know, somebody told me every, all authors are on Twitter. It's like, well, the writing community is kind of on Twitter. I don't know so much how many readers are on it. So if you're using Twitter, again, unless it's political or maybe a business type book, why are you, and what are you doing? I actually am secretly falling in love with TikTok right now. And, book talk. And I was resistant in the beginning 
because it is such a creative platform. I'm working with so many authors who are writers. A lot of times it's hard enough to get them to do a nice pretty image for Instagram. TikTok is a whole nother level in the fact that it's video content. It is literally, you know, I made the joke, not unless you want to be a dancing author. If you want to be a dancing author, then you can be on TikTok, but you literally have to create creative content in order for it to work. It's not quite like Twitter or Facebook. You can just make a few comments and post a few memes. You have to be a creator. But, 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 AG, I think you know this too. Book talk has really taken off lately. What I mean by book talk, it's, it's a hashtag. It's like a micro community inside of TikTok. Kind of like Facebook and groups and kind of like hashtags and everything. But on TikTok, those communities, they feel a little tighter. Um, the way your feed is organized, it's more by your interests than your followers. So you can find and make friends on BookTok. And there's different hashtags too for book lovers and you know TBR and all of that. But when you kind of enter this community, it's a very open, gracious, fun community. And even just watching the videos is, is a really good time. The cool thing about BookTok is they love authors because most of the authors are over there hanging out on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And when they come to BookTok, they're kind of like, what am I doing here? And the fans love that. They love like that, oh my God, you know, my favorite author is here. Um, and the, the cool thing too about Book Talk, it's revitalized backlist books like nothing you've seen before. There are books that were literally published five years ago. And all of a sudden the publisher started seeing the sales go up and they're like, what's going on? What happened? And it was because of Book Talk, because people started sharing it and reading and you know, doing their book talks, TikToks with it. And it really has picked up for a lot of different books. There's, there's some genres that work better than other. Again, YA and mysteries, romance, fantasy, some of those genres work, you know, probably a little bit better than maybe your nonfiction or your business books. But I suggest if somebody is feeling motivated and creative, um, not to dismiss book talk on TikTok. Yes, I, I need to get going on those too, because <laughs> I've, I've never, I didn't, I stayed away from, from it. But now if you're doing it, I know that's something that I need to do too. Um, I know that, um, so the, the digital, digital marketing and this building a, a solid online presence for your authors was always a, a, a big thing with Black Chateau. What? And like when you started, did you have a crystal ball? Did you know what was going to happen in 20, in 2020, 2021? No, no. I mean, really, the company was born out of being an author myself. You mentioned my alter ego. Um, I had been doing marketing and PR in-house for 20 some years, as well as yeah, you mentioned broadcasting. I was a host and you know, did a lot of event marketing. Um, so it felt like a natural segue when I decided to start my own business to focus on authors. I saw when I was marketing my own book, the niche and the opportunity and the need there. I, I, I couldn't find the person that I wanted to work with on my book when I was doing it. And I was like, well, I can be that person to other people and bring in a lot of the digital marketing things that I already knew how to do. I looked around the industry, I'm like, there's, there's some things here that are a little antiquated, kind of doing things a little old school. Um, my previous job was, I was vice president of a digital marketing agency. So when it comes to SEO, and we mentioned social media, building websites, all of that, uh, it's, I have very much an integrated marketing philosophy in that all these things need to work together when they're all working together that's what builds you up so I, I guess in a nutshell that's kind of the inspiration and why we started it and stuff happening you know we were kind of poised in a unique position we were a virtual company for several years before virtual companies really kind of became a thing that was the other thing I did it was like mm, we don't need to have that fancy office we can cut costs and put, you know, 
give those savings to our clients rather than having to pay for the fancy office and the yeah. rent and the location and everything. So we've been working with team members from around the world from the beginning because we can hire talent from anywhere in the world. You don't, we don't make them go to an office. So being able to use online platforms like Zoom, we were using Zoom years before people were even aware of what Zoom was. So yeah, we were kind of fortunate to be positioned at that juncture and you know, it, it was a pretty easy transition for us. And uh, thus you were able to help uh authors from and still helping authors from around the world. I know you you're working with authors from Australia and uh, South Africa and uh, other countries other than the US and of course authors from all around the US. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, ex ex exactly. It, it just opens you up. You, you, st you start realizing that the world is big and there's so many opportunities and we don't need to think regionally or nationally as much anymore. Uh, now, if you, had, if you had a crystal ball, what would you see for 2020? I can't believe 2022. I can't believe we are, are almost <laughs> at the end of 2021. Um, mm -hmm. what, what do you see for authors and the self-publishing industry? Because we are self-publishing mastery and like Chateau, we are, I mean, we are helping mostly self-published authors. So um, what do you see? What's going to happen? <laughs> I see even more opportunities because of the fact that you can publish that book on, you can do everything you need to do from your couch nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, you can work with AG or work with us or a combination of us and, you know, get your book up there, get it online. You can work with people, communicate with them this way. All aspects of that business can be done virtually. Um, and I, I do think that if you're forced to stay at home because of social distancing and things like that, you know, you can find a little bit more time to write. You're not driving, you're not commuting as much. So I, I just see more opportunities for authors. I see more wonderful books coming out onto the market. And I think just from almost a literary perspective too, when major changes happen in the world, it always in, it inspires literature or literature inspires it. So I'm really looking forward to how the books and the stories that we're creating today are going to evolve and influence tomorrow. You know, there, there's, there's some awful things happening in our world. And I like to be optimistic about things like climate change and, you know, equity and equality and all of the issues that are kind of, you know, really a hot button right now. But maybe just maybe, you know, with all these creative writers and authors who are able to get these stories out, it'll help those causes in the world. And for those of you who are considering going traditional, so traditional publishing for your book. The Book Fest this year has a special opportunity. And this is one of the things I love about Desiree and about the Book Fest. There is always something new. There is always some innovation. There is always some add-on that makes her and her events even more spectacular even more beneficial for, for the authors. So um, I made the introduction. <laughs> I'll let you tell <laughs> them about this amazing add-on to the book fest this year, because as an author, I'm really excited. I think that's a great opportunity. Yes, yes, thank you. So we've introduced the pitching room. It's virtual. It's basically a page on the website that has a database so that authors can create a profile and upload their book pitching material, samples of their manuscript synopsis, book proposal, depending if it's fiction, not fiction, information about them, videos if they'd like, their social media, basically all of the things that an agent wants to see to consider you for representation. Because that's the key, right? Authors who want to go the traditional route, they need an agent 
in order to get that publisher. Or they need maybe to get the attention of an acquisitions editor, or in some cases there's publishers that they can go direct to. So we have that database, so authors can do that. And then on the other side of that, we're inviting agents to build their own profile so that they can see those authors. So the public can see them too. The agents, they get to see a little bit more, more information on them. And if they see something that they like, if they see a pitch, a manuscript, an author that they want to reach out to and possibly represent, it's kind of like mash.com, but for books and authors and agents. So that's what that pitching room is. And then we kind of took that another level forward by integrating it into the book fest. And we're doing that with two live panels that are happening at the book fest. One is called Brave New Writer and one is called Critiki Bar. Brave New Writer is very similar. I know you've gone to a lot of writers' conferences. So writers, your, your audience who have gone to a writers' conference understand that there's usually some kind of pitching component. You probably pay to pitch your manuscript to different agents who are there. I've seen it where it's done like a cattle call, where it's literally like, you've got 10 minutes and they're ringing bells and the people are running into this big room. And I've always thought, God, that feels so sterile and insensitive. You know, you see authors practically in tears sometimes because they didn't pitch the right way and they were rushed and they were so nervous. And I thought, wow, it's gotta be a better way to do that. So Brave New Writer, and we named it that, it's kind of a play on the Aldous Huxley you know, book, Brave New World, but it's also because I feel like the authors need to be empowered and applauded for being bold and brave enough to pitch their manuscript, because man, that's hard. And we shouldn't make them feel like they're, you know, they're not doing it right. You know, some of the agents can be downright mean to them. So I want them to be built up. So giving them this platform means one, when they do enter their materials, we're giving them access to a knowledge base. Basically, you know, articles and videos and other panels that the book has has done. You know, this is how you should do your query letter. This is why your genre matters. This is why word count matters because all of these things are what the agents and the acquisitions editors are looking at. And we're trying to make sure that their, book, their pitch materials are done the right way. And so the authors can enter for a chance to be in Brave New Writer, which is then them on a virtual stage, similar to this, pitching their manuscript to a panel of agents. So it's kind of like Shark Tank, but for writers and a little bit more favoring the writer. You know, sometimes Shark Tank, Mr. Wonderful could get a little bit mean and nasty. Now that might happen. But again, the idea is giving the authors a fair fighting good shot. Because that's what I would hear. I don't know if you've you heard that, AG, when you would attend conferences. The agents are always like, oh man, I never see any good pitches. I never see any good manuscripts. But there's nobody in between that is helping the authors to get the, the pitches and the materials right for the agent. So that's, that's where we're marrying those things together to try to pull that together to, to help authors, to help writers. And the cool thing is an audience, if you, if you, you know, maybe you're not ready to pitch yet, but watch it, you know, you'll learn. We want other authors to learn the do's and don'ts of pitching by watching other authors pitch. You're, you're gonna start learning what is wanted and expected. At so many of these conferences, you'll have a panel of agents telling, do this, do that, and don't do that. But I feel like we always tell people when they're writing, show instead of tell. Once you see it, I think you'll start getting it. So that's what Brave New Writer is, and I'm very excited. We have several fabulous agents that are gonna be on that. Brittany Davis and Andy Ross, and you can find all the information. I don't want to just sit here and start naming off names because then I always forget a name. Um, but uh, the list is on the BookFest website. Um, and then Critiki Bar is actually a, something that Catherine Sand, she's a literary agent, um, came to me and she said, let's do Critiki Bar at the next BookFest. And I'm like, what's a Critiki Bar? <laughs> Catherine, what are you saying? And she's like, you know, an agent and an author walk into a bar. It's a critique bar. I'm like, I love it. Let's do it. What it is, it's Catherine and a good friend of hers who is a New York Times bestselling author, David L. Robbins. 
they are critiquing page one of manuscripts. And again, that's another thing you see a lot of times at writers' conferences. They're critiquing the manuscript, critiquing the first page, or sometimes even just critiquing the first paragraph. So they're going to do that. So again, when you enter the pitching room, you can add on if you would like to be considered for a critique bar. You can add on if you want to be considered for a brave new writer. And it's a way to help authors more on a virtual stage kind of see and learn and you know, there's no guarantees. We can't guarantee there's going to be book deals or offers of re representation, but ultimately that's that's the hope in, in doing this. this. This is so, I love this. This is so wonderful. This is so great. Same as um, this whole idea of, of the book fest game. I remember last year, although it seems like a century ago, Black Chateau and books that make you, you guys, you were preparing for the um, LA Festival of Books, like you usually do, right? You, 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 you used to go there, have your booth, the book launches, it was a, a very cool event. And then suddenly that festival goes away and this rag goes, oh, what if we create our own book festival? And that's how it started. Like this would be actually the fourth the second fall edition, because there is a spring edition and a fall edition. So what precisely, else, yeah. What else is happening? Oh, yeah, uh, you explained that perfectly. Yeah, I mean, we, we did it the first time and I was like, Ooh, that was fun, it worked. And as everybody knows, by the fall of 2020, we're still under lockdown, so we did it again. And after that, I was like, okay, Spring and fall, we'll just keep doing this. Um, even when and if everything is just, you know, a magic wand got waves, because I don't think it's gonna really happen too, too soon. We still have this virtual platform because it brings together people from all over the world. So that's that's where the book fest was born. Um, it's an exciting online event that's free to attend. Yeah, like I was saying, if you enter a brave new writer and critique bar and the, the pitching room, there's a nominal fee for that but everybody can watch it and check it out online. It streams on the website, it's thebookfest.com. Watch it right there, right on the homepage. People are always like, where do I go? Where do I get tickets? And where do I sign up? Do I need a code? It's like, no, literally just, just watch it there. It also, we, we air it on YouTube through the books that make you YouTube channel. And then there's an iframe, so it pushes it out to the website, but you can go natively and just watch it on YouTube. Um, and then we'll stream it to Facebook and maybe some other social media platforms too. But it's basically the website and YouTube. What we like to do too is we polish up our programming a little bit. You know, we, we want this to be just a little bit more show-like because we want to curate that content so that it can be viewed and used again. We've all been on the Zoom call where people are freezing up and dropping out and stuff like that. So we edit these up, we polish them so that they're nice. We put them on the YouTube channel so that they can be viewed again and again and again. So it's it's it definitely a live event and we want you to come there live and chat and hang out with other bookfesters. But then the cool thing is if you miss something or you wanna go back and watch it, we're curating that content for you. Um, I know this will be a tour de force for you since you're in France. <laughs> now we are going to use French um, because you're you're basically you're the host of the festival. So again, um, it goes for two days. First days is first days October twenty third. That's basically for the readers, but any author is welcome to attend because you have some fabulous guests throughout the day. And the book fest will have a, a live segment, the live author chats where you can actually interact with those authors. You can ask them questions. And then the day that I think all, all everybody who's watching now will be want to attend for sure all day long, just save your the, the Sunday because that's for uh, that's for for the authors and that's a that's a really interesting um, day because you have some hot topics there oh yeah yeah well you you kind of glazed over the fact that you're going to be helping with the live author chats you're helping to produce that and you're going to be one of the authors who's chatting as well, you're going to be moderating a panel. Uh, why don't you, AG, talk about the panel that you're going to be moderating at the book? 
Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, such a joy to be part of the book fest. Uh, I always look forward to it. And um, yeah, so on Sunday at 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, uh, I'm going to talk to a bunch of amazing people and experts about different avenues uh, for publishing. So we are going to have Joe Solari and Russell Nolte to mention just two of the people. I just don't want to give too many spoilers. And anyway, bookfest.com, you will find the link in the comments or in the, in the show comments. Um, so we are going to discuss different avenues and why a particular ab avenue, whether it's self-publishing or traditional or uh, you know, hybrid is the best for you and the pros and cons for each of them, depending on, you know, the book genre, your author brand, your writing goals, all of these elements need to be considered when you choose, um, when you choose a publishing uh, avenue for you. And I think also the budget you have is important because self-publishing is not free. Um, if you have marketing skills like Desiree, then yes, probably you can consider doing the book marketing yourself, but maybe you just need a publisher or a hybrid publisher to help you with that. So yeah. there are yeah. things. To exactly. exactly. Yeah. And then um, I think everybody is um, invited to join the fabulous giveaway, which is a trademark mm -hmm. of the book fest. And uh, there are some fabulous prizes to win and some fabulous books. So um, it'll be, it'll yeah, be yeah. a fun and exciting, very exciting event. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I'm excited to have you participate. You're absolutely right. There's so many different avenues and options for authors. So it's good to get that overview. What's the difference between self-publishing, hybrid publishing, traditional publishing, vanity presses? Oh, yeah. Indie presses, there's, yeah, yeah. And understanding too. So, so sometimes I think, okay, is that a vanity press or is that a hybrid press? And, you know, is that really a printing company that's helping them? You know, how big is this publisher? Is it a smaller imprint? So kind of understanding the nuts and bolts of how that works, I think is really important. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So tune in October 23rd, October 24th, October 23rd, I do have some, um, fun and uh, and enjoy um, meeting other other like-minded authors other authors experts and then on Sunday just take notes learn from the experts and um, and get to know um, the the book fest team and uh, that's Ray and uh, and everybody involved exactly exactly it's like a community that's what I feel you know if you're a book fester you're part of the community I do sign up for the email alerts. That way you're always in the know uh, what's going on. We send out the schedule. We actually just announced the schedule. We'll send out a reminder again. Um, we'll send out information. So it's easy to enter that contest, the big bundle of books, like you mentioned. We do a virtual gift bag too. Uh, you know how you can get a gift bag, a goodie bag when you go to a real conference okay. and it's full, filled with stuff. So we do it virtually and we're gonna have like marketing tips and books, free downloads from our friends at Smashwords, for example, plus other goodies. I know uh, WNBA, Women's National Book Association, they're going to do a mixer in November, and they're going to be inviting people through the virtual gift bag to attend for free. So I, you can save real money on, on some of the, the goodies in there. So make sure you sign up for the email alert so you can get that. So, so thank you. Thank you for, for um, creating this wonderful, wonderful event and the gifts. You, uh, you, are, you are helping us a lot. So thank you. Um, and um, there is a lot of work involved in, in pulling together such an event. I mean, it takes months, months and months and months to do it, to prepare it. So that's Ray is a hero. I can tell that. <laughs> and everybody you are you. So thank you. you are too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. AG, you're my hero as well. Thank you for having me on your show and for everything you do for authors and writers, the writing community, and for being a part of the book fest. I appreciate you.
Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you, and and uh, it's been wonderful to have you on on the show. And uh, there are so many things we can talk about. So definitely, we'll have to do this again. Um, have a have a wonderful rest of your stay in France. Enjoy the chateau. I will. <laughs> um, the castles there and the uh, in France and. Um, I'll see you or we'll see you all at the book fest, October 23rd, October 24th. Thank you. Yay. Thank you.